So we're going to look at the sine rule here. The sine rule works when your triangle isn't nicely behaved. It's not a right angle triangle, so you can't use trig ratios. But you can use something called the sine rule to start calculating unknown angles or unknown sides. So, first of all, we need to label up our triangle. Just going to, at random, pick three of the vertices, A, B, and C. Yeah, it doesn't matter which one you label, A or B or C, you can do whichever one you want. I'm just labeling them like that. Next up, whatever's opposite capital A, you call it small a. Whatever's opposite capital B, you call it small b. And whatever's opposite capital C, you call it small c. I can't reiterate enough, it doesn't matter what order you do a, b, and c in on the vertices, as long as a is opposite a, b is opposite b, and c is opposite c. We have labelled our triangle. This is kind of like with trig ratios where you say, here's the opposite, here's the adjacent, here's the hypotenuse. We're going to have sides A, B, and C, and angles A, B, and C. Now we can figure out what our sine rule is. This is the sine rule. It says that A over sine capital A equals B over sine capital B, which equals C over sine capital C. That's the sine rule. Now, we don't usually write it out as all three like that. Usually we pick two that we find most interesting, and we use those two to solve for one of the four unknowns or maybe we'll pick these two, or whatever it might be. I'm not covering that up. Oh, well, there's our sign rule. There's our rule. Um, when do we use it? So here's our rule. It needs to be a non-right angle triangle. It doesn't have to be, but it's a non-right angle triangle when you know either two angles and a side, two sides and an angle, and two of the same letter. So you need to know either capital A and small a, or capital C and small c, or capital B and small b. Otherwise, it won't work. Uh, you'll see more of that when we do something called the cosine rule. Okay, let's do two quick examples of the sine rule. So here's my first example. I'm going to try to find x. Now, first of all, is it a sine rule question? Do I know two angles and a side? Uh, yep, I know two angles and I know one side and two of the same letter. As in, uh, is one angle and one side opposite each other? Angle, side, opposite each other, that's going to be the same letter. All right. Uh, let's label this up with our A, B, C. It doesn't matter what order I do it in. A, B, and C, which means that this is going to be side A opposite, side B opposite, side C opposite. Okay, now that it's labelled up, I need to think about how I'm going to use my sine ratios. I know A angle and I know A side, so I'm going to use this portion of my sine rule. I'm going to say... A over sine A equals, and I know angle B, and I want to know side B. So I'm going to use that portion of my sine rule, uh, B over sine capital B. Okay, now I'm going to sub in my values, A equals 10, sine capital A equals 70, small b is x, that's the thing I want to know, and sine 31. Okay, now, cross-multiplication. I can move anything I want along these arrows, and the goal is to isolate x. All right, so that's going to be 10 times sine 31, moving sine 31 up to the top, over sine 70 equals x. And now I can literally just type that into my calculator, spit out an answer. x equals 5.48. I love the sine rule. I think it's even easier than that right angle stuff. Uh, let's do one more question. There's only two kinds of questions here. Well, a third one, but I'll make another video about that. Um, the other one is where there's no known angle. All right, so first of all, I'm going to label my triangle. I don't care how I do this. A, B, C, A, B, C. Okay, and now I need to decide which part of my formula I want to use. Um, I don't know angle C, so I'm going to have to use the C part of my formula. So C over sine uh, capital C equals, and I know the B portions. I know B is 95 and small b is 15, so I'm going to use the B portion of my formula. Sub in some values, so lowercase c is 12, sine C, C is the thing I want to know, theta equals lowercase b, which is 15, over sine b, which is 95, 
Okay, and now it's just a little more complicated here. So it's still cross multiplication. I'm going to move the sine theta up to here. I'm going to move the 15 down to there. I'm going to move the sine 95 up to there. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Sine theta over here. 12 times sine 95 up to here. Divided by the 15 down to the bottom. Okay, uh, that looks pretty good. But I don't want to know sine theta. I want to know theta. So I've got to take one more step here which is to use inverse sine or shift sine or uh, sine to the negative 1, whatever you want to call it. Sine, negative 1, and then all of this stuff. Make sure your calculator's in degrees, shove it in there. So that's going to give me theta equal to 52.84. Okay, uh, looking at my, at my diagram, that makes sense. It definitely can't be more than 90, because that was 95. Um, that's nearly everything you need to know about the sine rule. There's something called the ambiguous case, which I'll cover in another video, but that is the sine rule. Big formula there. Practice some of these. Either you don't know a side or you don't know an angle, and then there's that little bit extra to come in the next video.